right, so this is going to be another movie review. This one's called The Mystery Man, 1935. I'm giving it one out of five stars. I hated this flick. It's supposed to be a 1935 comedy, but the description on the cult cinema classics says adventure, mystery, something else. I can't remember, but uh, anyways, it's got Robert Armstrong from King Kong and uh, Son of Kong. I thought he was supposed to be the the carnival barker for King Kong but and Son of Kong. So I don't know what he's doing in this movie. But uh, anyways, I'm doing overnight shift as promised doing my first review of Monday here in San Francisco doing the overnight valet again oh man so the the regional manager here says he keeps telling me that I'm going to get My eight hours pay for Friday, even though I messed up my time card. I'm not used to the the time card punches. You know, I have to punch out for my lunch, punch back in, and then punch out at the end of my shift. I just have to remember that. Simple stuff, but uh, I'm not used to the buttons on this timesheet system. Anyways... Um, getting back to the movie <laughs> so it's in glorious black and white of course 1935 it's depression era comedy type thing but I didn't laugh one single time Robert Armstrong is not a good comedian he keeps k- telling his lady sidekick the uh, pretend Mrs. Doyle that they're uh, that they're married. He keeps pretending like they're married, but they just meet each other, like on the street or something, or in a cafe. Anyways, so Larry Doyle is a uh, newspaper writer in Chicago. He doesn't get along with his boss. He gets drunk and he starts bad mouthing his boss when his boss uh, follows him to the bar. After he's totally sloshed, his boss gives him like 50 or 200 bucks. I can't remember. And uh, so what does he do? He goes to the bar and gets, he gets sloshed with his uh, co-worker buddies. And he ends up getting fired for bad-mouthing his boss at the bar who was following him around. And uh, so he ends up on a train all hung over on the way to uh, St. Louis. And uh, don't ask me what happened there because there's some kind of bridal shower thing going on and he's involved and I don't I, I didn't understand that part but uh, anyways uh, both him and this other gal are, are broke when they uh, when they grab some coffee and donut at the uh, at the Greyhound station or whatever whatever the heck that uh, that cafe is charge me 10 cents you charge me 20 cents for a donut and coffee only have 15 cents she says so uh larry doyle robert armstrong ends up paying the bill then they uh then they meet out on the street and they start fighting with each other like um Like they're kidding around or something, but they're really uh, secretly in love with each other. 
and they start to build a relationship and they get tie up, tied up with this eel character who's uh, who's a criminal. Uh, Larry Doyle is trying to get a scoop on it with the St. Louis newspaper now. And uh, he ends up being charged driving. <laughs> For some reason, he drives away with the, uh, the eel's car or something. And uh, somehow he gets charged with uh, murder for holding the uh, the weapon. But then the newspaper guy at this St. Louis newspaper, he he makes up an excuse like uh, he threatens the uh, district attorney there in St. Louis with uh, having the uh, the managing editor a call, or he's he's trying to blackmail him somehow to get a, uh, to give Larry Doyle a uh, twenty four hour reprieve to catch the eel. So Larry Doyle and his girlfriend pal, whatever uh, the pretend Mrs. Doyle, they end up going back to the pawnbroker shop where where they sold the gun, which was the murder weapon. If you're confused, so am I. Anyways, the eel, sh he, he ends up punching out the uh, pawnbroker and gagging him. Then the eel shows up in the shop and pulls a gun on Larry Doyle. But his girlfriend has a gun also. Larry Doyle does something smart for once in this movie. He's already, he's always getting himself in a jam. He pretends like he's somebody important. For the uh, for the hotel manager, but the hotel manager threatens to kick him out in 24 hours. Call the police if he uh, after the hotel manager found out that he was a fraud. And he keeps finding ways to make to get money and. Uh, to uh, finagle his he, he's uh, he's kind of a hustler during the Great Depression so I guess that's supposed to be funny I don't know I wasn't laughing anyways um, he's doing all kinds of shenanigans uh, his former boss at uh, there in Chicago hates him so at first he says no, that's not Larry Doyle. He just made it up just so that he can get kicked out of the office there in St. Louis for the uh, other newspaper. But then he starts to get an inside scoop on the on the eel story, this uh, criminal who's running around called the eel. He just likes he just looks like a common criminal. He's not dressed up in a hood like the snake in the hooded terror and uh, yeah that's uh, he just looks like uh, one of those typical hoods from the 30s type of uh, actors if you know what I mean typecast actor but the only one that I could I could recognize in this movie was uh, Robert Armstrong anyway but uh, anyways I'm just uh, I just parked a car I don't, the guy just the overnight guy here, here just sits at the desk he doesn't even like open the door for the uh, residents here He's just sitting there making money. He says uh, he doesn't want nightmares. That's why he uh, got this overnight job. <laughs> Interesting dude. But, uh, yeah. Cool. I'm just... Uh, 
can have two people at the desk, so here I am. <laughs> Thought I'd get this quick review in during my 10-minute break. Cool. Well, that, uh, that movie was a real stinker. I say skip it. Not recommended. Not check it out. No, ch I'm not going to say check it out or highly recommended for this one. But um, anyways, wanted to get that quick review in as promised. Uh, Adrian said he was uh, suffering through uh, Toby Hooper movie. I can't remember the name of it. I think it's from 1990 or something. But uh, he said it reminded him of David Cronenberg. Not quite as good, but decent ending. Uh, so I added that one to my list, I think. I think I added it to my list. I found it on YouTube. Um, so I found two, uh, I found three uh, of his mentions on Netflix and two of them on YouTube, I think. But uh, I was only able to save Ghost. Ghost is in my save queue. It's not available. 1990. There was one guy in my chat room who said <laughs> he agreed with me that watching a Whoopi Goldberg movie is like torture. <laughs> So I'm going to torture myself if that one ever becomes available and it makes its way up its up the Netflix queue. Anyways, there's decent reception here. I'm going to upload my video, let you go. Uh, sorry that it's dark in my car. There's not much lighting in this garage here, but uh, cool. That's the end of my review. Laters.